Good morning, everyone. It's a live Wednesday with Karen, and I'm so excited you guys are here. And it feels like it's been longer than just the um, week and one day since the last time we were together. I've had a really, really, really busy week. Um, I, I went over to the west side of the state for a doctor's appointment, and it just seems like I am so far behind between my daughter having a baby and all the things going on around here. So um, it's just feels like it's been a long time. So I hope you guys are all doing great. I'm going to head over to the chat room real quick and see who's all here. Um, first, we have Linda and she says, good morning. And Daisy's with her. Good morning, Linda. It's good to see you here. And Stephanie in Texas is here. Good morning, Stephanie. And Ellie Mae, good morning. And Pat is here, good morning. And let's see, and Charlene is here, good morning. I'm so glad you guys are all here. Um, need the prayers this morning. My, oh no, uh, it, I hope I will pray for you, Charlene. I can't imagine right now being without AC because my, um, my AC is going right now too. We've been having a lot of um, heat here too. We had a heat wave earlier this week. So I am praying for you. And I'm sure everybody else is too. Linda says she is. So I'm glad she's she's praying for you too. Let's see who else is here. I just saw. Good morning, Judy. It's great to see you here. I'm glad you're here. Um, so before we get started, I just want to let me let you guys know first. I'm um, our topic today is pattern reading, and I'm just going to do a um, a broad stroke over pa pattern reading. And this is probably the number one question I get um, because a lot of crocheters these days are either self-taught or they were taught by a grandmother who never could read patterns. So they only know how to do the stitches and they kind of know how to put things together, but they don't know how to read a pattern to get what they want. So if you are one of those crocheters or if you have any questions, about pattern reading, um, make sure you type in the um, in the chat room the letter Q, a space, and then type in your question, and I'll scoop up all those questions and answer them as I can. Um, but before we do that, I want to let you know we are doing a giveaway today, and today's giveaway is in honor of my new grandson James, I'm giving away the pattern for. Mr. Cunningham. So this is the sweater. This is the original. This is eventually going to James. Um, this is the original design. It's made with fingering weight yarn, three colors, and it's super simple because it's one color per row, but you, you carry up the yarn up the side. So when you seam everything, the, the, car the yarn being carried up is not seen. So it's really cool in that respect. It's a drop shoulder. Um, so there's the only shaping is here at the neckline. Um, even the sleeves are rectangles. So um, if you are interested in this pattern, I can tell you I have a copy of the print pattern here. It is, I believe, a 12 page pattern. Oh no, eight page pattern. This is the pattern. It's a cute little boy on the cover. And it is completely charted. It's got schematics for you. Um, there's pictures inside of close-ups of everything. Um, so it, and it's been tech edited and all this stuff, good stuff. So, um, if you're interested in winning this, um, pattern type in the chat, happy days. Now I named it Mr. Cunningham because the sweater kind of reminds me of the sweaters Mr. Cunningham on the show happy days used to wear. Um, it's just, it gave me that vibe. And then it's also sock yarn and happy days was, um, themed in the fifties, which is known for their sock hops. So that's why this sweater is called Mr. Cunningham. And that's why we are using happy days. Now make sure you capitalize happy days and you have it all together with the hashtag, just like you see it right now. So if you want to win a copy of this pattern, type in happy days. I'm going to put it on full screen here for a second and I'm going to go to the comments really quick. Um, let's see, I saw Spring Splendors here. Good morning, Andrea. Good to see you. I'm so glad you were able to make it today. It's great to see you here. Um, okay, so I'm going to take that off the screen now for a little bit and I'm actually going to change the screen I'm sharing 
really quick um, because I have some stuff I want to show you um, with this topic. Um, hang on here. There it is. Okay, now I'm getting back into the swing of doing things around here. Okay, so I'm going to put myself back in here really quick. Okay, so today, um, yeah, Linda, that's right. You did. I have a list going now of who my winners are, so I know um, who can and cannot win. So Linda, unfortunately, cannot get um, in on the, the drawing this week, but um, I, I'm glad um, everybody else. So make sure you type in hashtag happy days with a capital H and a capital D, all one word squished together. Oh, yay. Liz, I'm so glad you're back. It's great to see you here. Um, okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about the topic, which is pattern reading. <laughs> now, if you have a question, again, I'm just going to say it one more time because a few more people have popped in. Um, if you have a question in the chat room, type Q, a space, and then the question that you have on pattern reading. Now, I am not going to talk too much about reading charts today. This is actually, I'm going to use my pattern here as an example, actually reading the verbiage part of the pattern um, because I truly believe, yes, you should know how to use, read charts, but I truly believe you need to be able to read both charts and words. And I know there's a lot of um, international designers who only do charts, and that's great, but I, I tend to believe that everybody needs the words and the charts, because if you have the words and you're more comfortable with the words, the chart will help you figure out the words. If you are more comfortable with the chart, the words will help you figure out the chart if something looks confusing. So it's good to know both things. So I'll do something on chart reading later on, but literally the questions I get from a ton of people right now are on actually reading the words and not the charts. So let's get started. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this back up um, here really quick. Oops, I don't want that. I want it this way. Okay, this is actually a page on my website. And I'm going to put the link up here for you in just a second. But it's, it's the pattern reading portion of my we website. Okay, so you can if you want to go directly to this link, I, here's the link right here. It's karenhooley.com slash category slash pattern hyphen reading. Okay, um, this is I have four blog posts about breaking down patterns and being able to read them. So I just saw a bunch of comments come in. So hang on one second. Let me just make sure. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like this sweater. And Linda says she likes both words in the chart, and so does Andrea. I think it's so important um, to have both. Okay, so this is actually in reverse order of the way I usually would talk about my patterns um, because of the way my chart or my website sorts things. It puts the most recent post at the top and the the um and the, the oldest post at the bottom. So if you go to this page that I just linked, um, you wanna start at the bottom with abbreviations. Now abbreviations, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and click into this one here. So with abbreviations, I think that's the very first thing you need to learn when reading patterns. So um, Abbreviations are kind of the special language. Um, one of my cousins looked at one of my books one day and he said it was like um, reading a foreign language. <laughs> and I have to agree with that because it takes a little bit of, of time to figure out what the abbreviations are. And abbreviations vary from country to country. Um, there's US terms, there's UK terms. UK usually covers um, New Zealand and Australia as well. Um, if you're reading in a different language, their abbreviations are going to be in a different language, that kind of thing. Um, 
honestly, um, over the last 15 or 20 years, even more now, Craft Yarn Council has been working to standardize the, the abbreviations. Um, I really think it's it's so important that we standardize our abbreviations. So like double crochet is DC, repeat is REP, you know, that kind of thing. So abbreviations are how we shorten words to make the pattern a little more, a little shorter. So we're not always writing double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, or single crochet, triple crochet, half double crochet. We're not spelling the whole word out. Um, we don't have to always write the word repeat, uh, things like that. A P-A-T-T -T for pattern, that kind of thing, like repeat pattern, um, R-E-P space P-A-T-T. -T. Those are all sorts of different um, standard abbreviations. Now, if you look at my patterns, I tend to use for the basic stitches, I use the standardized abbreviations that Craft Yarn Council recommends. Um, I will make this little caveat that I am not the only person who does this, but I'm also, uh, I also know that there's many, 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 many designers, especially designers of free patterns who change these abbreviations. So um, when, you, when you're looking at free patterns, um, I am going to say you get what you pay for sometimes. I mean, I'm not saying that all free patterns are poorly written, but there are a lot of designers who feel like they need to abbreviate in a different way. So I'm just putting that out there for you. Um, and that's true with paid patterns too, just, just to be... Um, uh, just to be honest, um, it, it it depends on the designer. Um, a lot of people want to have their own series of, of ways of doing things, and that's great, but that makes it rough on crocheters because for every different designer they, work, they want to use their patterns, they have a hard time understanding what that designer is trying to tell them. So just um, a little bit uh, right there. So I have... Um, 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 put a list in this blog post of the common um, cra Craft Yarn Council's um, abbreviations. Um, these are the ones that are standardized, and that's why the list is here. So things like chain space is CHSP, um, cluster is CL, front loop is FLO, back loop is BLO, you know, those kinds of things. Whether they're capitalized or not is a standard. So MC should be capitalized if you're working standardized. Now, I don't always follow that. Sometimes I will put that MC in the lowercase and that's just a preference. But if I was going true, true standard, I would put it in capitalized. Um, yarn over hook, YOH. Those kind of things. And it's just a guide. These magazines have their own sets um, of abbreviations. And if you'd like to have a handy printout, if you look down here, I have a link to the printout of those, those uh, um, abbreviations. And it's something that I recommend to my beginning students to print it out and laminate it and stick it in their project bag because it'll at least give them the most common now, again, there's going to be in patterns, and we'll talk about pattern structure here in a second, but let's say with Tunisian crochet, they have their own abbreviations for stitches. So you're going to want to make sure that your pattern you're working with has any specialty stitches like Tunisian or special lace stitches or special shells or things like that. They have their own abbreviations. So you want to make sure the pattern has a key that tells you, you know, what the how to make these stitches. Um, and my patterns always do. If I have a special stitch, like a V stitch, I'll put V stitch and they'll write out V stitch. And then I'll have like double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the same same space or stitch, depending on what the pattern is. So um, those are those are considered specialty stitches, bobbles, popcorns, special types of shells, um, foundation stitches, all those things. So just so you guys know, um, make sure your patterns have an abbreviation key. And if they have specialty stitches that they have how to make those stitches. I always do that in my pattern. I'm pretty sure I, for example, in this pattern um, that I've got here for Mr. Cunningham, I do believe I have a section of special stitches and it's a double crochet two together. 
And I have the abbreviation, words written out, and the text for that. Okay, so let me go back to our list here and let's talk about the second point. And I'll come back to the chat after I go through all these points um, to answer any questions you guys have. Um, second thing is pattern structure. So first thing you need to know is abbreviations because if you don't know your abbreviations or can't figure out your abbreviations, you won't be able to read the pattern. The next part is understanding pattern structure. Um, in pattern structure, every designer and every magazine and every book has a little bit of a difference with how they read or how they um, write patterns. Just so um, pattern instruction is a, a laid out a little bit differently depending on who is designing it. But the basic structure is you have the beginning matter, which is the title, the romance text, and the romance text is kind of like the description. Um, usually, you know, I'll talk about a shawl at the very, very beginning of the pattern. Um, like here for Mr. Cunningham. I don't know. I can't remember if you guys can see me or not on this screen. Yeah. So I'm Mr. Cunningham on the cover. This little blurb about Mr. Cunningham is um, is about um, about the shawl. So that's considered, or not the shawl, the sweater is called is romance text. Um, there's also, you know, your skill level. If they, if the pad designer uses skill levels, I don't use skill levels anymore because I want everyone to be able to try using things. Um, there's abbreviations. There's the finish size, the materials needed, the gauge, any special stitches, and any special notes about the pattern. So that's what we call the beginning matter. That's all the stuff that you should be reading before you even start to think about the pattern itself. You should be reading all of that. Um, and gauge is really important, guys. I mean, a lot of people skip gauge, especially with garments. And this is something that you're going to want um, to check your gauge before you um, actually start working on it. Okay, the second section is the directions, and that's basically the verbiage in the pattern. And it's usually row by row. It's got um, also, the, the, I would include the stitch charts and the schematics in that section for the directions. And then there's the closing, um, closing matter. And the closing matter includes the finishing. Well, I put here schematics and stitch charts because in my patterns, I tend to put them at the back of the pattern, but some people put them directly in the pattern. Um, acknowledgements. And I'm one of the few designers out there that actually, well, it's starting to get a little more common, but I actually um, put an acknowledgement to my tech editor, my photographer, my stitchers, um, the gal who lays out all my patterns. They're all listed in the, in the ending, in the closing matter. And it's basically a thank you. And for other people to find, if they're designing their own patterns, to find these people if and check to see if they are accepting new clients. So that's something to think about. And I always think that um, this is something that's really important. Now I wrote this blog post mainly for designers, but um, the last thing in the back matter is where to subscribe um, is something that um, if you really like a designer's pattern, I highly recommend you at least subscribe for a couple months to their newsletter to learn more about them, to learn more about their patterns. And you may find that they have other patterns out there that you really like. And especially if you find a, a designer who has well-written patterns and designs in a style you like or in a weight of yarn you like, that is so important to have in your pattern. So that is the second step is the structure, is understanding the structure of a pattern. Now, the third section is the crochet symbols. And this is where a lot of people get confused. Because um, we talked about abbreviations, but I didn't talk about the asterisks and the brackets and all that kind of stuff. And so in this third post about the symbols, I have um, the most common ones here. And so for those of you who may not understand how patterns are supposed to be written if you see, or read, it's, if you see an asterisk, it marks the beginning portion of the pattern directions that have worked more than once. So for example, asterisk, repeat from asterisk three times. So you start at the asterisk and then when you get to the word repeat, you go back to the asterisk. Um, a lot of people, um, designers, and I have this noted up in the paragraph above, some people use uh, the plus sign or double asterisks. Um, some people have even used curly brackets. 
Um, those aren't standards in the industry. So again, that's with a designer preference kind of thing. Um, the other thing you guys would notice is parentheses. And the parentheses denotes a portion of the pattern should be worked in the same stitch or space. So in my example there, it's two double crochets, parentheses, two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets in next corner space. Um, so you're doing those, that, those four double crochets and the chain three in between them um, in the corner of that. And that's what that. So you do everything inside the brackets in the space in the space or stitch that is talked about after the end, after the parentheses are over. Now the brackets, the square brackets are used to denote the portion of the pattern that should be repeated the exact number of times following. So single crochet in next stitch, chain one, four times. So you're going to do single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. So that makes sense so far. Um, so those are the, the major symbols. There's a few others out there, but um, most of them are designer made kind of things. So the, those are the three symbols that we really, really use in standard crochet patterns. Okay, so crochet terms is another thing we all need to know. And I have a list here as well. Um, multiple. So in a lot of patterns, and I'm starting to do this now, it's like a multiple of three plus four. Um, if you're doing a starting chain, it'll tell you what the pattern stitch needs as a multiple. So if you want to make something wider or smaller, you can use the multiple um, information. Um, the play, PM place marker, that's a term. Um, even though it's an abbreviation too, it's really a term because place marker allows you to, to mark a stitch um, or between stitches so that you make sure that you're doing your repeats correctly or you're making your stitch in the right spot. Um, a lot of times you'll see people place a marker where increases should happen so that increases always happen in the right spot. I use that a lot in my um, garment patterns. Um, work even is another term and work even means you just don't increase or decrease, just work back and forth. Turn is another term. Turning chain is this, this, the turning chain at the beginning of the row. Front loop, back loop, and posts are parts of the stitch. Um, so those are, those are terms and symbols everybody needs to know, especially the beginning crochet. And then finally is breaking down the pattern. Now this is what I really wanted to talk about, um, especially if there's anybody here um, even advanced crocheters will find that there is a pattern out there that they have a hard time breaking out and understanding because there's so much wording in there. And so what, this is how I teach when I teach my re pattern reading class for words, using words. Um, so if you look here on this blog post, I have a ruffled rose pattern. I don't have a picture of it because I haven't made it in a while. But if you notice how I wrote, wrote it out, it says chain, right here, it says chain four. I'm gonna try to see if I can highlight that. Aha, this is what I want. I want a highlighter and I want this to be yellow. Okay, so I right here is the first thing. Can you guys see that? So it says chain four, join with a slip stitch to form the ring. So what I do is I tell people to write it out because really you're reading it like a pattern. So I wrote in words, chain four stitches, and then with a slip stitch, join it into a ring. Here's the second row or the first row. Here's the actual text. And then it says chain one, which is right here. Single crochet in the middle of the ring, which is right here chain three, which is right here. And it says to do that five times. So you'll see that I have one set of, here's, um, I'm gonna do this tool and I'm going to make it red here. So you guys can, or hot pink maybe. Um, so you can see here, um, there's one repeat, there's two repeats, three repeats, four repeats, five repeats. And then the last thing is to join with the slip stitch and that's what you see here. So 
Does that make sense, guys, how I'm writing it out? So row two, or round two, I should say. Here it says single crochet, chain one, double crochet, and chain one space five times. And you'll see here, single crochet, chain one, double 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 crochet, chain one, single crochet. So there's five double crochets, chain ones between two single crochets. Do you see how that is? And then in the next chain three space, it does the same thing. And since we're making, I don't remember how many petals we have, but for each petal, I wrote out everything. Now, this is kind of exaggerated because a lot of people don't need to write it out six, five or six times. They can just say, do this five times. Um, but I wrote it out to make a point of showing you how it, it should work. Here's round three. So here's again, oops, this is so hard sometimes with my feet. With this, uh, okay, so so here I wrote it all out what to do. Round four, I wrote it all out what to do. I mean, I literally wrote out everything. And sometimes that's what we need to do. It's really, really hard sometimes to read a pattern. And if you, by breaking it out into bullet points like I did here, um, on a piece of paper or on your iPad or something like that, um, sometimes it'll it'll click your brain into remembering um, what what it is you're going to do. So like here, I mean, literally, I wrote it out five times so that, okay, I'm doing this five, five, those single crochet in the middle of the ring five times. So that's really, really easy to find your stitch numbers and things like that. So I'm going to go back now. So um, what I usually do when I teach a, a class, I'm going to take this off the screen now. When I teach a class, what I like to do is um, have a sheet where I've written each line of the pattern that we're using for the class to learn how to break down patterns and have lines, the number of lines they need to actually write things out. And it's a good practice, even if it's just a simple pattern, like this little ruffled rose, it's just a little um, applique type of thing. Um, if you do that pattern it, it and write it out, um, it, it, it'll start to make you see how you read a pattern. But I always tell everybody, you read patterns just like you read a book. You read between commas, you, you know, from comma to comma is something or a, a semicolon or a colon. Um, brackets are important to remember. That's why you need to know your 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 uh, symbols because that helps with your repeats kind of thing. So um, that is kind of what I wanted to show you guys. So hang on a second here. Um, oh, Sharon's here. I just saw she popped in. Good morning, Sharon. Um, words and charts. Um, Linda says she was learning new abbreviations and chart symbols, probably a throwback from my youth. Oh, you like learning new abbreviations because it's a shorthand in high school. That's a good way to describe it. Um, abbreviations and symbols is very much like shorthand. And once you understand how to break down the pattern, you can easily, if you're, if you're making up your own pattern, you can easily use the shorthand of the abbreviations and symbols to handwrite it out. So if you want to make do it again, or you actually want to become a designer and start producing your own patterns, you can quickly write down what you're doing and then um, be able to create a pattern from it. So that's really important. Um, Stephanie said, I've encountered a few patterns where the designer said to go to their blog to see how to do the special stitch for their pattern. So not cool. It should always be in the pattern. I agree, Stephanie. <laughs> I mean, I will have a link to a video or a page in my pattern that has videos for the pattern. But if I have a special stitch, I always list it out. And then I'll say, I have a video if you'd like to see it live, you know, see me making it or whatever. So I agree with you there. So does anybody have any questions on anything I just talked about? Let me take a sip of my coffee here. 
anybody have any questions about pattern reading or um, writing patterns, even this kind of, I mean, if, even if it's just for yourself, do you have any, any thoughts about how, you know, how to be able to um, recreate what you're doing for yourself? So like maybe you're making a, a blanket and you're using a stitch dictionary and you want to be able to make this blanket for, you know, you're making it for a grandchild and you want to make it again for a future grandchild coming. Um, and you want to have it in your, in your notes, you know, this is a good way to learn, but make sure you check out that, um, that link. I, I'll put it back on the screen here. Hang on one second. Um, my blog, blog series and download that, uh, that PDF I have for you on the symbols and all that stuff. Um, it's, it's a two page, uh, I think it's two pages. Um, I haven't looked at it in a little bit, but it, I believe it's two pages and front and back, if you print it double-sided um, with the abbreviations, the standard symbols, and a few other little, I think there's um, information about the UK, US conversion of stitches and a couple other things on there too. So make sure you check that out if you haven't. Um, anybody have anything they wanna ask or talk about with pattern reading? I know that most of you here that are watching live, um, pretty much have a grasp. Um, many of you are in my, uh, are my testers or have done a lot of my patterns, but I want to just make sure I have a video out there for those who will watch after the fact or have asked me questions um, about uh, a pattern reading. So I have something to share with them on all of this. So if you're watching after the fact, let me know in the comments um, if you have any questions for this as well. Okay, so I'm going to put this back up on the screen. I'm going to stop sharing this for a second. And I'm going to put this back up. Um, there we go. Okay. I am, don't forget, guys, since we're about the halfway point of everything, I am... Um, let me put me back up here for a second. I'm giving away the pattern for Mr. Cunningham. If you've popped in late, this is a, in honor of my new little grandson, um, James. Um, I made I designed this many years, not many years ago, but several years ago. Um, and this is now the sample is now going to go to James once um, he gets big enough to wear it. Um, if this is the pattern I'm giving away, here's a print copy. I'll give you a digital copy. Um, it's Mr. Cunningham, and I did forget to mention that it comes in four sizes, and I do it mostly by chest size, but I do, but I do say 12 months, 2T, 4, and 6. So those are the, the, the four sizes. But chest sizes in inches is 21 inches, 23 inches, 26 inches, and 28 inches, and the length is 12, 13, 14, and 15 inches. Um, and I, in the sample, I use the Premier Yarns Deborah Norville collection, Serenity Sock White. I don't know that they still have that yarn out there. I'm trying to find out. 2017 is when I designed this. Okay, so it's been three, five years since I designed this. Um, just so you guys know. Um, and um, so I don't know that her yarn, but any sock weight yarn should work. And it's a really fun, fun pattern, and it's fast. I mean, if you've ever done uh, children's clothing, you know how quick they are to crochet up. So if you want to enter to win the pattern, oops, let me put it back up here. There we go. You're going to type into the um, chat room, hashtag happy days. Um, this was named after Mr. Cunningham from Happy Days. Um, I have talked about at the very beginning. Um, this sweater just kind of gave me that vibe and the fact that Happy Days is during the sock hop era and it's made with sock yarn. I always, I thought that that was quite a good name for this pattern. So Happy Days is our entry information. Um, so I'm going to take that off the screen for now. And I see that a couple things have come in. Sharon says, I have tested for quite a few designers and it is frustrating when they do not use asterisks, parentheses, and brackets in the standard way. That's when a diagram, yes, absolutely, Sharon, yes. And especially if the diagram 
shows the repeats. Um, not a lot of designers show what the repeat is either. Have you noticed that on charts where they don't have a bracket that says repeat this or they don't have it shaded in? I have two different tech editors that do my charts and one does brackets and the other shades things in. In fact, I'm trying to see um, on the chart here, you'll notice there's a bracket here that shows the repeat. It's a really small one here, so it's hard to show on screen. But yeah, it's a four stitch repeat. And oh, and, and then she also has the row repeats here. So, and then she charted out what the, the neckline should do. So just a few stitches on either necklines, but the number of rows that needed to happen. So um, yeah, it is very frustrating. And even when um, you get a final pattern that doesn't have them that way, it's really frustrating. Um, Charlene says, is this the same as reading Amigurumi pattern? I'm new to this reading. Amigurumi patterns, yes, they, they work um, the same way. It's just that um, in my example there, it was working in the round, but it's, it was making a flower. Um, but they, the abbreviations should be the same. I mean, it's still crochet, it's still crochet stitches and mostly single crochet. So they should be using the standard abbreviations and the asterisks and all of that stuff. So um, that is kind of, um, it's again, I'm like a roomy designers tend to have their own way of doing things. I've noticed over the years. So they may have different abbreviations and stuff. So it's really important that if they don't have a key of what they are trying to have you do, don't do their pattern because you will be way confused. So that's really important. Um, Sharon says, do you have a good way to determine when a turning chain stitch counts as a stitch and when, when the pattern does not state it? Oh, um, honestly, Sharon, um, the only thing I have done, and I've had multiple patterns, I mean, even before I was a designer, this used to be a thing. And um, what I end up doing is I do the row and I see what their stitch count is. And then I count my stitches and I count to see if I get the right number with the turning chain excuse me, or without the turning chain. And then I usually use that as my guide, but that isn't always a tried or true thing. I will always put in my pattern notes, whether or not my turning chain counts. And in my patterns, if you, um, so I do shawl side to side. And a lot of times I will change, chain two and turn on the, the straight edge of the shawl if I'm doing side to side and not count that as a stitch piece. It gives a nice little ruffle at the top of the, of the shawl. And I will say double, so chain two turn or chain three turn, depending on what I'm using, chain two or chain three for double crochet. And then I'll say double crochet in the first stitch. If I say double crochet in the first stitch, even if I didn't put it on my pattern, I would tell you that to assume that the, the turning chain does not count as a stitch. Um, that's something I do, I, but I always put it in there, whether or not it, it counts or not. But um, if they say first stitch, but if they say double crochet in the next stitch, that means to skip the first stitch and the, and the turning chain counts as the first stitch. Does that make sense, Sharon? I hope that helped a little bit. I mean, that seemed like it was really wordy, but it's the only way I can really say it. So let me know if that worked, if that um, made sense. Okay. Um, anybody else have a question before I go? I, I am the topic because I have some things, some new stuff in the in the studio that I want to share with you. Um, and don't forget to put in your happy days if you would like to win a copy of today's pattern. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start chatting about the new stuff in the in the studio. Um, if you have any more questions, oh, good. Okay, Sharon, thank you for letting me know that worked. Um, sometimes you have to really read between the lines with the verbiage and patterns too, like saying, um, because double crochet, you uh, whenever you do a turning chain, it's assumed that you always skip the first double crochet, and that's why it says next. Um, 
but um, you have to, if you're not counting it, you have to crochet in that first stitch. So that's why it says in first stitch or first double crochet or whatever it is. So that's important. Okay, so let's talk about new things in the shop. I'm gonna um, leave the ticker up just in case anybody thinks of a question. Um, first thing I wanted to tell you guys about is I finally got the yarn for my grandson's blanket. Picked it up um, Friday, Friday or Saturday, can't, Friday I think. And I got Dream in Color. I don't know if you guys can see the label. I'm going to put their website up. Um, this is Dreaming Color Yarn. And it's their worsted weight, which is called Classy, or one of their worsted weights. And it's 100% superwash merino. Four ounces equals 100 or 250 yards. And they recommend a size 7 or 4.5 five millimeter hook or needles. I mean, actually using a 4.5 because I like the drape that this has. I ordered two of each color, but I already have wound one to start. I'm just at the very beginning of the blanket. So you, you can't see much of it. Next week I'll have more, hopefully. But the colors I got, this is called Naked Shame. This is called Petrified Forest. It's kind of a green. It's kind of hard to see in this picture. It looks really, really dark in this picture. It is pretty dark green. It's kind of a foresty green, but it's not as dark as what you're seeing on camera there. And then this is called Bluefish. Uh, my daughter is doing woodland theme in his, his nursery, so I wanted some woodland colors. And um, I chose to use a higher end yarn for my daughter because she She's been around me. She knows how to take care of yarn and socks and knitted garments and crocheted garments. And, and so I know, even though this is super wash, she knows not to wash it. I mean, she can wash it in the machine on gentle, but she knows not to throw it in the dryer and just lay it flat. She's really good about that. And so I trust her with really good yarn. So this was a little on the pricey side for a baby blanket, but it's also super wash. It's not going to pill the beautiful colors. So, I mean, if you want to go to their website and check it out, I've used Dream and Color for a lot of things over the years, especially when I was working at the yarn shop over on the west side of the state. And so I can tell you that they have really, really great yarn. So when I was looking at my local yarn shop here and she said, have you looked at Dream and Color? I went, oh, I didn't even think about them. And sure enough, I found the colors that I wanted. So I had to order them because she only had the colors on a different weight. And I wanted a bulk, I wanted a little thicker weight because it's cold here in Washington. I wanted him to have a blanket from his nonna that is a little bit thicker. So that is that blanket of that yarn. And I just saw somebody else um, popped in. Oh, you're welcome. Um, and Charlene, don't hesitate. Um, if you have problems with any pattern, it doesn't have to be my pattern. But if you have any questions about any pattern, you can always hit me up and just say, hey, it's, this pattern says this. I don't understand what they're trying to say. And if it's a pattern I know, I might be able to help you for sure. And if it's not a pattern, at least I can look at it and, and try to get you in the right direction. But one of the things I will recommend, Charlene, and this is true for everyone, whenever you have problems with a pattern, make sure you contact the designer. I appreciate it when a someone comes to me and says, I think there's a typo in the pattern. Can you look at this? Or I don't understand this. Um, that's why I have pattern testers now. And I, um, I really think it's important that the designer knows that things are confusing. And I know a lot of people try to just work it out on their own and make it work for them and keep going. But the designers need to know that there's a problem in the pattern. And if they get multiple people asking the same questions, they know they're not wording things right and that they need to figure out a different way of doing things. So super, super important that you contact the designer. And I know a lot of designers won't even answer you. Um, and that's par for the course. I'm not one of them. If you ask me a question, I will ask, answer you. So don't hesitate to ask. Stephanie says, I love Dream and Color. But several of my LYSs carry it. And yes, I love their fingering too. I love their fingering. I'm probably going to start using it a little bit more too. Um, I really, 
I forgot about them because I, I haven't worked in the yarn shop for a very long time. And um, the yarn shop I used to do, oh, I still do patterns with up north um, on the northern west side. She doesn't carry Dreaming Color. So I was excited to see it again in, um, in here in Washington or here in Pasco. So, all right, Linda says, I finished my baby blanket for the shower last Sunday. Yay, the baby's nursery is also done in Woodland thing with baby animals. And just by chance, my blanket was full of crochet teddy bears. How cute is that? I, you know, I thought about um, doing a filet crochet piece, but I, Cassie's really into not having toes going through the, the blanket. She, she, I made her a blanket out of bulky weight yarn that she requested. Well, if you've ever worked with bulk, bulky weight yarn, you know that you're going to have big holes between your stitches unless you do linked stitches, which I was going to do with a, um, I wasn't going to do link stitches with bulky chenille yarn. And so she says she loves this blanket, but my toes keep falling, coming through the holes. So that's why I chose um, worsted and not doing a filet, a filet kind of thing. Um, Andrea says, I purchased a sweater pattern that is horribly written. I asked the designer a question and no reply. So I made it up. I just really like the stitch pattern. See, and that's, that's, that's rough. Um, it's, there are so many cute little sweaters out there and I have had more, so many people come to me and say, Hey, I can't get a hold of the designer. Do you understand this? And I'll tell them that it, I would have to completely rewrite the pattern. That's not something I will do. I will not. I mean, I don't feel that's fair on my time to rewrite a pattern for someone who should know better. But, um, but if you're comfortable enough to make it up, that's awesome. The stitch pattern, sometimes it's the stitch pattern that you like and you can modify it to make it work for what you need to do. Um, I know that newer crocheters um, may not be able to do that. Um, but uh, the other thing too, is if you aren't on any Facebook groups or if you're on Ravelry um, and see if the designer has a Ravelry group um, or just um, there's a group out there, you can find them on Facebook called Crochet Partners, which is a group I used to belong to back in the early, um, early 1990s. And I just found them again and I rejoined them. Um, they now have a Facebook group. You can ask these kind of questions there and see if anybody has used this pattern and has figured it out. Um, if you're on Ravelry, sometimes the errata is on, on the, um, on the, uh, Ravelry page, but I don't know that for sure. So, um, because I don't use Ravelry anymore other than to have my patterns linked there. Um, that's, I, I don't know how that whole site's working anymore, but that's something to think about too, for those of you who are not, um, are struggling with patterns. Okay. So, um, that's that one dreaming color. Okay. So, Next thing is um, when I went over to the west side, I stopped at my yarn shop that I always go to um, that I do the patterns for. In fact, I should probably pull these out. Oh, hang on one second. Um, for those of you who were here last week and know that last week I released the Cloudberry pattern, I got the samples back. This is the scarf of Cloudberry. So that's the original. It's on the, and here's the shawl. I'm just gonna keep it in half, but that's the shawl for Cloudberry. So I got those back. But of course, when I go to a yarn shop, I can't not buy yarn. So um, <laughs> so actually one of my favorite yarns that she carries is Barocco's Remix Light. And um, this is a golden color. It's um, buttercup is what they call it. Um, and it's a really good price point. It's um, let me get it's 100% recycled fibers. Um, it's 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen. But they're all recycled fibers. And it's um, let me see, it's 100 grams or three and a half ounces. There's 432 yards per hank or per skein. And um, I have a pattern for a little romper for my grandson 
And they didn't have the brown that was originally used, but then I, everybody knows in my family what a big Winnie the Pooh fan I am. I'm a huge Winnie the Pooh fan. My kid's nursery was a Winnie the Pooh. I had a Winnie the Pooh watch. I mean, I Winnie the Pooh is kind of my, my guy. So we thought it would be kind of fun. And I have enough yarn here, not only to make the little romper with an embroider, the Winnie the Pooh face on it, but I can make a hat with little ears on it to go with it. So um, that's what this yarn is for. That The link I have there on the bottom of the screen is where to, um, where to see Remix Light. And if you have my pattern for um, English Boom, uh, English Boom is the very first pattern I did for Silly River Yarns for the local yarn shop tour. And this is the yarn we used. And that's when I fell in love with it. So um, I got two hanks of this. So hopefully in the near future, you'll see me working on this too. Okay. And then of course, while I'm there, I always have to pick up any new yarn that she might have in the shop. And this is Kel Kelborn woolens mojave and i got two colors that kind of go together um this mojave is 60 percent cotton and i can't remember what the other 40 percent. i want to say um she's got her label on top of it so i can't read it hang on let me see if i can peel this one back a little um i guess i could go back to the website um Oh, of course it's not. Oh, it is linen. Yeah, it's cotton linen. And each one of these is 185 yards. It's a uh, 50 gram hank. It is, they call it a DK. I would not call this a DK. I would call this a fingering. Um, it may be a heavy fingering. It's just the wraps per inch on it. Um, they call it a fine. And it, they I say, it mentioned you should use a, an E to a G crochet hook, and that lines up with fingering weight. Um, so I would call this a heavy fingering. Um, 50, I said 50 grams, right? And 187 yards, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, 185 yards each. So these are for a project I have coming up that I'm, I want to swatch with this yarn to see if it's something I want to use for this project. Um, so that's why I bought two colors because I know it's a two color project that I'm going to be doing. And I just happen to really like these two together in the shop. So that is, is why I picked these two colors. I don't know that the, the final project will be these two colors, but I just, I really liked how they blended. Um, one is called, this one's called raspberry and this one is called plum brown. So it's a plum that has a lot of brown in it. And if you if you remember what a few weeks ago I did that um, color theory live stream where you take a picture and you put it in in um, oh, what's the, what's the word I want um, in um, in black and white and you can see the different you know what one's on a lighter spectrum and one's on a darker spectrum um, they definitely will uh, pop make the other color pop so that is what this yarn is. And I think that's it as far as new stuff. And I just saw another, um, I have that same Mojave yarn. I'm thinking about weaving some placemats or table toppers. Um, I, you'll be, I'm going to be swatching with it. So once I have some swatches, um, I will be definitely be showing on the live what's going on. I'll probably have it on my, on my, uh, Facebook, uh, not Facebook. Well, probably Facebook and Instagram, um, the little swatches that I'm doing. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but July is my anniversary month. And this year it's 24 years that I have been a designer. Um, I started when my daughter, even though I sold my first pattern in December of that year, I actually started designing the month my daughter was born. My daughter was born in July. And um, I was already messing around with stuff, but I actually started designing patterns um in the in the thought of pitching them for magazines i have been designing patterns all my life but never to write them down and send to a magazine so um next year is my 25th anniversary and that's um that's why we got this yarn here it's a, something i want to swatch with for a special project i'm doing for my 25th anniversary 
excuse me, my 25th anniversary. So um, <laughs> thank you, Andrea, for the anniversary. Um, I have an idea. It actually came to me when I was at Fiber Fusion um, earlier this month um, because of the response I got with some of certain style of my patterns. And I thought it might be a cool way to culminate my first 25 years as a designer, um, as officially as a designer. Um, so um, that's what I'm working on. I'm not quite ready to say what the project is. Um, I can tell you it's a book, but it's going to be a book. Um, so, uh, but I can, I'm not going to tell you what the theme is yet. So <laughs> um, that's what I'm working on. Um, and if, if those of you who are in the Pattern Club already know this, if you've gone to the the chat area of our pattern club, but for everybody else, um, the month of June has been the most crazy month of my life. It started with going to fiber fusion and then it spent, it was two weeks w with my daughter, James being born. And then the following week after James being born, us thinking she was going to have to have surgery. I think I told you guys that last week because they thought she had a hematoma from her C-section and it ended up not being, and my, mentally, my brain has just gone. <laughs> I am so far behind, I cannot even tell you. Um, so for those of you who um, are in the pattern club, you already know this, but for everybody else, I am taking the rest of this week, or well, all of this week, to do some planning, to rearrange my projects a little bit. Um, in fact, I'm waiting on for some yarn that I should have gotten earlier this month that I haven't gotten yet. So I need to check in on that for another project. But um, and and rearrange what I'm doing going forward because I'm so far behind right now that some of the things that I was planning, like the crochet along, I was planning to start a crochet along in August or September, and that's not going to happen right now because I'm so far behind on that. Even though the project's done, there's all of the tech editing, photography, uh, creating all the pieces for it, it's not going to happen. So I'm probably not going to have a crochet along until later this year. If I do it at all, I might just wait until January. So bear with me on that, guys. Uh, you know, life happens. And I apologize for that because I did promise you guys a crochet along and I don't know that it's going to happen this year. So um <laughs> I feel like I'm floundering right now and I just need some time to regroup, I guess, is really my priorities um, as far as what's coming next. Because I have a lot of things happening in 2023 that I need to lay the groundwork for now and um, that's not happening. <laughs> so um, the other thing you might notice is um, on my website, the other thing is I, I, on my website, you'll notice the colors have changed again. And that's because I am working on the, um, I should pull these out, on the crochet crew, getting it ready for next year. And the colors of my crochet crew logo are these, and I want my whole website to match the crochet crew. So it's all one seamless thing. So I'm using the orange and the turquoise blue and the dark blue and the, and the, and the hot pink. So um, you'll notice things are changing. Now, if you're on my website and something is not readable, whether you're on a tablet, a phone, or a desktop, let me know because some of the crazy stuff with the fonts are acting up and I'm, I'm still figuring out some of it. Like my know my homepage, the very front page of my website does not work well on, on tablets and on my phone. And I need to fix that today. Um, but I wanted to get the colors done because there's so much other stuff behind the scenes I have to get done ready for January 1st um, that I just, I didn't want to have to deal with that part of it. So that's been done. And thank you guys for the happy anniversaries. Um, it's, it's kind of exciting. Um, yeah, Cassie was born on the 9th and then about a week or so later, I just, uh, a friend of mine told me I should start designing. And that's when I started picking up the, the hooks and starting design. I, I, so I always say July is my, um, 
my anniversary month, even though I sold my very first pattern in December of that year. So anyway, um, one more time, guys, I'm giving away. Uh, now I lost it because everything, all my yarn is covering it. I'm giving away a copy of Mr. Mr. Cunningham. I'm going to go ahead and do the drawing here in just a second, but just give you guys a last minute to put in your hashtag happy days. If you haven't put it in already, make sure you do that. I'm going to make this a solo screen here for happy days so I can do the drawing. So um, there we go. So I'm going to give you five seconds and then I'm going to hit draw. Five, four, three, two, one, draw. And our winner will be Charlene. Yay. Wonderful. Okay, Charlene, you are our winner. I'm so excited. Now I lost my cursor here. Awesome. So Charlene, I'm going to put my, I have confetti for you too. Congratulations, Charlene. Um, I think, Charlene, if you bought patterns from me before, I can't remember if you have or not. Um, but if you have not, um, well, either way, could you send me an email at karen at karenhooley.com? So that way I can um, get your email address and get that pattern out to you. I will check in the meantime to make sure whether or not you have a pattern. But congratulations, Charlene. I see people saying congratulations out here to you. Um, so anyway, guys, I am so glad you are here. I am going to be hopefully part of this week's planning, planning what our topic for next week will be. I did find my list of, of things. So um, I'm going to be going back on to that list um, to, to pick topics for things. But if you guys have a topic you would like me to cover, I'm going to take that off here for a second. If you have a topic you want me to cover, I'm going to put myself back on the screen here. Um, you go to the karenhooley.com slash capital Q, small n, capital A, and let me know what that topic might be. Um, because I know that most of you here that watch me regularly are pretty um, uh, seasoned, I guess is the word I want, crocheters. Um, you may not understand patterns once in a while, but you've been crocheting for a while and you know stuff. And some of you are designers, but make sure you um, let me know what type of, you know, maybe advanced topics you need. And it doesn't have to be something physically like reading a pattern. It could be, you know, a theory question or something like that. You know, like I did a color theory, um, you know, working with colors and picking yarns and stuff like that. So make sure you you send me that information. Um, so I see a lot of congratulations, Charlene. So I'm so excited for you. So congratulations, Charlene. Um, so anyway, um, for those of you who are here, thank you so much. Okay, Char Charlene, send me an email. Um, Karen at KarenHooley.com. And I will, um, and I'll get that pattern sent to you. So make sure you, you send me an email so that I have your email address. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, if you have any questions, but I'm so glad you are all here. I appreciate you guys being here. And thank you so much. Um, you make my day, my week so much better when I see you guys here. So um, congratulations, Charlene. I'll, I'll talk to you after the show. And for the rest of you, thanks for being here. Have a blessed rest of the week and I'll see you next Wednesday. Talk to y'all later. Bye y'all.